Got a new instrument on the bench tonight. This is the SysJoint SV4401A Vector Network Analyzer. Now this unit was provided to me from Chelligance in exchange for doing some videos. Now normally I don't accept products like that to do videos uh, unless they're products that I would actually use and this certainly qualifies as that. So this short video is just going to be a quick introduction to what this unit is and some of its basic features and I want you to let me know what videos you'd like to see in using this VNA. Now it's hard not to compare this unit to the Nano VNAs that you've seen me do many videos on. In fact, this 7 inch display is larger than the entire Nano VNA H4, which I really like and I use uh, quite a bit. As you might imagine, this unit here has some improved specifications over that Nano VNA uh, H4. This will cover up to 4.4 GHz. It has an adjustable output power range from minus 42 to about uh, minus 12 dBm. Uh, and then dynamic range wise, it features about 75 dB dynamic range up to about a gigahertz and a half for S21 measurements and, and about 50 dB dynamic range for the S11 measurements. Uh, the Nano VNA H4 does have about 70 dB dynamic range. They don't specify which measurement, and that only applies up to 300 megahertz. So significantly better RF performance here. The larger screen uh, gives you a lot more readable, uh, usable area, and can feature up to 1,001 points. I've got it configured right now for 501 points. This large touchscreen display is really bright and is actually visible out in broad daylight. Now the unit is equipped with a pair of N connectors uh, to make connections to your devices. It also comes with a pair of N to SMA compatible uh, connectors as well as the open load short and through uh, calibration kit components and a pair of SMA cables. Now the larger screen not only gives you a larger number of points and better readability and visibility of the traces, it also allows menus to re stay on the screen instead of getting hidden. And that makes the menu structure and the use of this instrument actually easier than some of the very small nano VNAs. For example, the traces are all on the menu on the left hand side here. And simply touching one of the trace badges makes that trace go away. Touching it again brings it back on. If I touch the Smith chart one, the tra Smith chart goes away. Touching it again comes back on. Touching and holding brings up the menu for that uh, to switch the port that the uh, trace is connected to, change the format, say from log magnitude to SWR, change the scale, etc. So it's really simple to go and bring up the settings for each of the traces by simply uh, touching and holding on that particular badge. The screen area also will show you the, or the electrical delay uh, for port extension applications. It will show you the output power and the number of points right on the screen. It will show you if you're doing any averaging. And then the, the frequency, the start and stop frequency is shown here. You can shortcut uh, going in and changing these parameters by simply touching on them. And now I can actually put in a new start frequency if I want to. So I'll put in, say, 100 megahertz. I can dial that in, and now I'm starting at 100 meg. I didn't have to bring up a menu to go do that. Now the main menus on the right uh, all kind of start at this level. The stimulus menu will give you the ability now of setting the frequency uh, through either setting the start and stop or the center and span or just set a CW frequency if you're doing some CW testing. And you can use, even set up a log sweep. You hit back to get back to the main menu. Also under the stimulus menu is where you can actually configure the instrument to do a LC match. So if you've got a non-ideal impedance, like an antenna connected up to port 1, you can have the unit calculate a proper LC matching network to match that at a particular frequency. You also can set the IF bandwidth or measurement bandwidth. And this would be helpful when you're measuring things with very high dynamic range like uh, duplexers. A narrow resolution bandwidth will drive the noise floor even further down for making those S21 measurements. You can set the output power uh, by just dialing in a particular value between minus 42 and minus 12 dBm. And you can turn on averaging if you want to do some averaging if you've got some noisy uh, results. And also set the number of sweep points. And finally, under the stimulus menu, you can also go in and set the signal generator mode. Now in this mode, you can actually set the port 1 to be an RF signal source. 
from uh, you know essentially from 50 kilohertz to 4.4 gigahertz the frequency range of the instrument and power range again from uh, about minus 42 dBm up to minus 12 dBm. The next thing on the top menu is the marker menus. You can actually support uh, up to eight markers and you can select various markers, so one through four here, we hit more and we get uh, five through eight. The marker search functionality allows you to, to search for a min or a max, uh, search left or right, etc. The info set allows you to determine which uh, marker readouts or what traces are going to be read out in the marker readouts. So I can pick from trace 1 through trace 4, which are these four traces here. You can also pick from reference traces as well. because We can actually take any of these traces and, and bring up the two different reference traces up to make comparison measurements between one measurement and then another configuration. So you can pick and choose which of those are going to be displayed up in uh, the display area. You can use your finger to move where the marker readouts land on the screen just in case they happen to be in the way of what you're trying to measure. And if this drag on slider is turned on, you can actually use your finger to drag the marker positions uh, in frequency with your finger. Of course, you can always use the left and right arrow buttons here to move the marker position as well. The sweep analysis allows you to do things like low pass, band pass, high pass, and SWR analysis by moving markers in a particular locations and then have the result like the uh, 3 dB bandwidth etc for the filters or say a 2 to, two to 1 SWR uh, bandwidth you can have that measurement uh, performed for you automatically. And finally under the marker menu the operations of course that's we've got a little bit of a spelling error there we're missing the E for operations but maybe it just simply doesn't fit with the font Operations allows you to take the current marker and use that to set the start, stop, center, or span. Back at the top menu here, the Cal menu allows you to you know, run through a calibration routine, you know, reset it. You can even set the uh, kind of second order characteristics for high frequency, cal you know, high performance calibration kits here as well, as well as setting port extensions to move the reference plane to your device under test. The save and recall allows you to uh, save and recall various settings including uh, calibration settings and things like that. The file menu allows you to go in and look at files that you may have stored such as uh, S parameter files like S1P and S2P files as, and even uh, CSV files and image files that you can save on the instrument. And the saving of those files is all enabled through this uh, storage button here. You can save the S1, S, S1P, S2Ps, and uh, also save traces as CSV files. And the config menu allows you to set uh, date and time, the backlight, and then how the unit would communicate to your PC. Now, of course, there is a PC application that you can use to run the instrument as well, just like there is on the Nano VNA. In fact, it's the same application. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but that's available there as well. So as you can see, the menu structure is a lot flatter than it is on some of the small compact nano VNAs. Turning traces on or off and configuring them is really, really simple. You know, simply touch them to turn them on or off. For example, if you just want to do an SWR measurement, I might turn off everything except trace 1, touch and hold trace 1, and select format and SWR. And now I've got an SWR trace that I can go look at. Now the arrow keys again move markers back and forth. Uh, the function and control keys have got some additional functionality with the markers that maybe we'll cover in a future video. So that's the quick overview of the SysJoint SV4401A uh, Vector Network Analyzer. Again, this was provided to me from Chelligance, and I will put a link uh, in the video description down below that links to the Chelligance website that also indicates all the different locations and distributors where you can purchase one of these for yourself. So now I'll ask you, what would you like to see in terms of videos using this VNA? I've already got one in mind that I'm going to do, and, uh, but I'd like to hear your ideas of videos that you would find useful uh, for this unit, and I'll work on putting those together. So thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you again next time.